Well, good afternoon, grade 11s. Uh, listen, I know you have a quiz to study for, but uh, tomorrow after your quiz, we're gonna talk more about this topic. And there's just a few questions, so it'll be easy for you to get caught up if you wanna concentrate on studying the quiz for now and then take a look at this video a little bit later. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna keep it short. Uh, we've been doing problems in one dimension, okay, so far. Uh, we're going to now add another dimension. I, we live in a, in a world with at least three space dimensions that we can walk through, okay? So you can move forward and back, left and right, up and down. Uh, you move forward through time. That's another dimension when you think about it. And uh, you can actually, there may be other dimensions. We think maybe up to 10. It depends on what theory of, we have this theory called the string theory that predicts other space dimensions, which is a really weird thing. I'll tell you about some other time. But you know, for, for Isaac Newton, 400 years ago, forget about all that. We're just talking about the three space dimensions you're familiar with, but we're only gonna do two of those. After all, we do live on a surface on a planet. It's not a flat earth, but we do live on a surface, okay? Which is a two dimensional surface wrapped around a three dimensional sphere. And we can describe those movements in two dimensions pretty easily, like on a map, let's say, north, south, east, west, on a map, that kind of thing. So I just wanna remind you, uh, one dimensional motion, oh, I'm in my highlight mode, let me fix that. So one D motion, okay, the way we do it is we define uh, one direction, as plus and the other the opposite is minus okay so let me give you an example of one dimensional displacement let's say we have our little man here he starts right there let's say he goes 10 meters uh, to the east then he actually turns around. I'm going to color this vector red. He turns around and goes 20 meters that way. And he ends up over here. Okay. So his total displacement, okay, would be, I'll use a rainbow for this, an, a vector where he starts right here, my little rainbow vector, to where he ends, and that would be negative 10 meters from where he started, okay? And so you're here, your displacement would equal, oh, it's beautiful, negative 10 meters, or if you like 10 meters west, okay? His distance he would have traveled to get there would have been 10 plus 20, equals 30 meters of walking because he walked after all, he did walk 10 meters east first and then he turned around and walked 20 meters west. And that's how we do uh, displacements like this, okay? Displacements and distance in one dimension. That's what we've been doing this already. Now, when you think about this total displacement, it would be 10 plus negative 20 equals negative 10 meters. And that's how we arrive at that. See, we add up these displacements here, but one of them, is negative because it's in the opposite direction. And that's all you have to do for one dimensional motion. It's really quite simple. But what if it's two dimensional motion, okay? For 2D, for example, let's say I have two displacements. Let's keep the first one the same. Let's say I have some starting point and I go 10 meters east, okay? And I use my square bracket notation for that. But now I'm gonna turn and my second displacement is Let's make it five meters south, okay? Now, in this case, my distance that I've walked, okay, is still 15 meters, just total, 10 plus five is 15, but what about my displacement? Well, I'm gonna draw a little diagram of my little man again, okay? So let me zoom in here. So here's my little man, he starts out, at the starting point, and again, I'll use the rainbow color. He starts here, okay? The first thing he does is move 10 meters east. So that's 10, and he ends up right here, okay? 
but then he turns and goes five meters south and he ends up right i'll use my rainbow this is his resting point his final point okay so he ends up there so now what's the total displacement well the distance is still 15 he still walked okay here so the distance let's do that first it's easy is still 10 plus 5 equals 15 meters that's just how far he walked right he walked 10 meters this way so 10 meters east and then he turned and walked five meters south so his total amount of walking is 15 that's easy but what about his displacement well the definition of displacement is a vector joining your starting point and your ending point so let me go back to my rainbow color this is his displacement now this is moving in two dimensions so i can't just say if east is positive then south is negative because see south has nothing to do with east it's not on the same coordinate axis right and so the two things are not correlated that way and so they bo can both be positive right but here's the deal if you look at this picture how are we going to find the rainbow vector okay how are we going to describe its length well we've got a triangle here and in fact it's a right angle triangle so what are you going to do to find the length of that missing side well you're going to use pythagorean theorem so you're going to go like this delta d squared equals 10 squared plus 5 squared this is the pythagorean theorem c squared equals a squared plus b squared right i'm actually going to find this number for you okay so let's do it it's going to be 10 that's 100 plus 25 so it's 125 square root I get 11.2 meters. So here, delta D is 11.2 meters. Okay. But I also need the direction. So I'm going to call that angle theta. Now, if you recall Sokotoa, because you are all, of course, math geniuses, right? <laughs> so Sokotoa means sine equals opposite over hypotenuse cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent equals opposite over adjacent well i mean of course you, you know these trig ratios so let's take a look at this the rainbow here is my hypotenuse the 10 meters is my adjacent side because it's adjacent to the angle theta here i'll put a little star beside it whereas five is opposite so this is the opposite side to my angle theta because it's not touching it right the 10 touches the angle so it's adjacent but five is clearly opposite to the angle so now to find the direction i'm going to write tan of theta equals five over ten and i'm going to take the inverse tangent with my calculator I'm going to go five divided by ten in my calculator go inverse tan and i get 26.6 degrees so theta is 26.6 degrees. Now, if you look at it, that vector is, the rainbow vector is south of the east line, okay? So here we found, let me erase my little star. The eraser is too big or something. Okay, so let me get rid of that and let me now try erasing this. There we go. Oops. All right. I'll put a little bit back in there. Okay, so we found that this is 26.6 degrees, or yes, 26.6. Okay. And it is 26.6 degrees south measured from the east line. So what we say is south of east. Okay. So now I'm going to write, therefore, my total displacement equals 11.2 meters and then i'll put it in the direction of 26.6 degrees south of the east line okay now this is actually the total displacement and i didn't get it by simply adding and subtracting numbers i got it by drawing a diagram and the diagram is this triangle that i'm highlighting for you here you need to draw diagrams now okay and I know, guys, I know how much fun 
you're like you're so much looking forward to drawing these triangles. Well, as if it couldn't get any funner, just wait, there's still more. Okay, so I'm going to give you one more example of how to do this. Um, all right, so that's all that's all fine, right? Everyone loves solving right angle triangles. Those are easy. But what if it's not a right angle triangle? Okay, and let me give you an example. What if my first displacement, so this is example number two. This one was number one. So what if for my next trick, we'll do one that's not a right angle triangle. So let's try this. Let's go 10, no, let's change it. Let's go 15 kilometers uh, and let's make it west, okay? And then my second displacement, I'm gonna make 10 kilometers, 30 degrees north of west, okay? So pay careful attention. I want you to find the total displacement here. Now, the only way to do it is to draw a picture. Actually, there is another way to do it that I will explain to you in the future, in the very near future. But drawing the picture for now is the best way to go. So watch. I'm starting. I'm going to start. I'm going to give it some room to go west. Actually, I need a better eraser than that. All right. So he's going to start here. He's going to go. I'm going to leave everything in kilometers, by the way. As long as my all my units are the same now, I don't have to convert to standard units. I'm not using the motion equations with self acceleration or anything. I'm just finding the total displacement. So he starts there. And then he turns and goes 10 kilometers this way. And I know my sketch is pretty rough on my tablet here, where this angle here is 30 degrees. That's 30 degrees north of the west line. This dotted line represents west. And if you go 30 degrees, this is north here, north of it, okay? So you're going 30 degrees from the west line towards the north line. Okay, so that's 30 degrees north of west. Now, if that's 30 degrees, what's this missing angle here? Well, you already know that missing angle is 150 degrees. Now, how did you know that? Well, you know it because these two angles, the 30, so this angle here, okay, that 30 degrees, and the rest of the angle here have to be supplementary, which means they have to add up to a straight line, which is 180 degrees. Now, the rainbow line, the sort of the magic total displacement line, it we started, our man started here, he ended here. So therefore his total displacement, oh, by the way, I should number the sides here. This side is 15 kilometers. And this side over here, is 10 kilometers, as the question tells us. And so our resultant displacement is going to be like this. And so that is your displacement delta D, the total displacement. And how are we going to find this guy? Well, we're going to need to find the side and the angle. So we need the size of the vector and the direction of the vector, right? So how do you find the direction? Well, or so the side first. Well, how do you solve a triangle that's not a right angle triangle? You cannot use Pythagorean theorem, but there's these lovely things called the sine and cosine law. So let me explain those to you now. Let's say you have any general triangle, we'll call it triangle A, B, and C, and the opposite sides are little a, little b, and little c, okay? Cosine law goes like this, okay? It looks like the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. It just, isn't that lovely? That's just right there, writing a triangle formula, but we have to subtract two a, b, cos, c. Okay, so we call that the cosine law. And this angle here would be angle c. This one is angle a, and that one is angle b. Okay, and this is our cosine law. 
All right, now we could use the other sides too. We could say b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos b, whatever. Okay, like these, this is just a generic formula. Now the sine law goes like this. The sine of capital A divided by little a equals the sine of little b divided, or big B divided by little b equals the sine of big C divided by little c. So this is, we have both of these available for use. These work on any triangle. Whereas the Pythagorean theorem only works this, it must be like it's only a right triangle. Right? All right. So this one here is clearly not a right angle triangle. There's no angle in there that's 90 degrees. So we're going to use the cosine law. Watch, to find the missing side, we're going to go delta dt squared equals 10 squared plus 15 squared. So this is the cosine law, minus 2 times 10 times 15 times the cos of 150. Okay. So that's how you use the cosine law to solve for the missing side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. I'm going to go 10 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 10 times 15 times 150 cos equals that. Take the square root. I get 24.2 kilometers. So I'm almost there. I have 24.2 kilometers. I'm going to save that number in memory. So that's how big the missing side is. But what about the angle? Well, to get the angle, I'm going to go the sine of theta, okay, divided by 10 equals the sine of 150 divided by 24.2, which is the side I just found. Solve it for theta. Okay, and I'm going to do that quickly for you because I don't want to waste too much time. So I'm going to go 150 sine times 10 divided by 24.2. <clears throat> and then I take the inverse sine to find the angle. <clears throat> and what I find is that theta equals 11.9 degrees. And if you look at theta in the picture here, that angle so let me rainbow it some more. This angle in here, okay, this lovely thing is north of the west line. So we're gonna call it north of west. So therefore, in this example, the total displacement equals 24.2 kilometers and it's in square brackets, 11.9 degrees north of the west. Isn't that amazing? Okay, I know you're gonna love this. Okay, so now what are we gonna be doing next? Everyone's favorite, solving triangles. So guys, I know you're gonna, I don't want you to lose sleep over this. You, you still have the quiz to worry about, so worry about the quiz first, and then we'll do these triangles after. Okay, so I hope you uh, are excited about that. I know you are. I know you are. So enjoy your time studying for the quiz and I will see you on Thursday.